hello and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial we are going to be building this beautiful laundry website i took my time to make this morning i'm going to show you the html css um process you're going to use to do this take notes this website doesn't have much content in it so we are just going to be making use of the few things that um, we are provided with so in this tutorial we are just going to be um seeing how we could be able to make this and right now i'm just creating my index.html file for you guys so if you are following along also do the same create your html file i have a folder called files here and inside there i have a picture which is okay so the man you could see over here you could see it here with that distance in the um website so before we go out, let's break down this website so as you can see in this website we have the header first the header and also contains the nav bar that contains um, the title of the website which is diamond laundry and also this um, icon here then this is an icon by the way not an image so just a demo then we have the um, hero section that says get your laundry and dry cleaning done within 24 hours and just has a description that says just smile and relax we'll do the dirty work and has a call to action that says start now yeah so that's nice and with the image here then we also have the how it works session that has a description and then three um three um boxes that shows the different things with the gets an estimate price a price estimate sorry then we have the white diamond laundry the only laundry company that speeds up your last minute delivery you also have bookie pickup and some other things um this is just demo content we could work on the content always then we have the contact form that says um full name and when you try to full it and to fill it up you can see it even does a little bit of html um verification and then the footer credits um that says made by 18 programmer so yes also another thing whenever you click on any of the links let's say the about it scrolls down smoothly to that section or maybe you click on the how it works it scrolls to that section so we are going to be doing all this and we're going to see exactly how it works and the coding process behind all this so the first step is to build our html file which is the index.html we have here visual studio code gives us this ability to be able to make use of a pre-installed boiler plate what i mean boiler plate the setup that we are going to be needing so to be able to get that i'm just going to put my exclamation mark and it's going to bring up this um icon here and i'm going to click it with my mouse and it's going to give us this html template to work with it's just a a normal html template with the title document we might need to change this to the title of our website which is diamond laundry so when we save it i'm going to right click here i'm going to open with live server for your own situation in this situation you might just want to reveal with file explorer and then click on it as you can see we have a very empty html page right here and we are going to actually populate this with a lot of stuff now so for us to begin i'm just going to create the css file we're going to be needing i'm going to be right clicking on this files folder i'm going to create a new folder and name it css and inside the css folder we're going to name this style.css and we name our css folder so now let's link our css to our html so that we could um since we're using external style sheets so it could reflect in our html and we do that by using the link tag we're going to say link then we're going to say that um ref sorry rel and then we're going to say style sheet <laughs> i've actually forgotten it so let's use the one that um visual studio code provides for us so as you can see it gives us everything we need we see the uh, rel style sheet and then this but this is actually an incorrect part because we actually have our css in the folder name files we'll need to specify the the relative part to it when the main relative part the direct part on how it can be gotten at that particular point so i'm just going to clean this off and we're going to write do it relative part to it so to be able to get it i'm going to say dot forward slash and i'm going to say files to tell html or the browser to check into inside the files folder and inside the files folder we have another folder named the css i'm going to say forward slash css and then inside the css folder that's where our main just our name our main um, style sheet is so I'm going to say style.css so Visual Studio could complete that for me and that's what will actually link our CSS to 
in right now so the next step we are going to do is <clears throat> pardon me the next step we are going to use is um, we are going to start by creating the header so as you can see on this particular side we have an icon here and we are going to be using a third party um, CDN like font awesome to get that and we also have this thing that says uh, diamond laundry and then we have our nav so first of all let's get font awesome CDN I'm going to search for font awesome CDN and whenever I'm trying to get a CDN for font awesome I love using CDN JS they have a lot of different um, CDN tools that you could make use of so once um, CDN JS loads we have um, different things and this is version 6.1.1 and the asset type is also this first one over here i'm going to just hover around here this one says copy url and the second one says copy link tag so in a situation like this we would need the link tag because we're making use of html to save us of the time we'll be needing to write it by ourselves so i'm going to just put this above our own css file and save it so as you can see it copied the link tag and added a lot of stuff to it so this is style sheets and everything that has to do with it this is the main cdn right here so the main reason why i put this link on top of our style sheet is so that we could use our style sheet to override because in css the styling that comes in next overrides any styling that is above it so we will have to put the cdn above so in case we want to add maybe a color or increase the font the size of this icon we could always do that with our own css without tampering with the main um css on the style sheet on the style sheet of the fonts also so that's fine so i'm going to be making use of um the div tag here so i'm going to make use of div and inside the div we are going to have um the first div that is going to contain the diamond laundry website and i mean the diamond laundry and the logo together and then the second div will contain the nav so we are going to just um we are going to try to get this icon so i'm going to say um cog icon font hyphen font awesome good so i'm going to go to font awesome right now to get that specific icon you could use something better you could use an image later on but for this purpose i'm going to, going to be using a an icon to make the work easier for everyone so it's taking time to load okay so oh it seems this is only a bit different but let's make use of this so um i'm going to just copy that and paste the html here and then i'm going to have a h2 element that says diamond laundry and i'm going to save it so let's check what we have on our website so i'm going to come here and refresh this as you can see it's just um an icon and this for now but we're going to be starting this with our css now the next thing we are going to do is the um how the nav items which is how it works about and contacts so we have to get that ready before we um start so like i said it's going to be in another um section that will have ul because we use another list when creating nav um navigation is mostly done with another list you could use another list or something else depending on whatever you are comfortable with so i'm going to come here and list the item so the first one is the how it works but let's not forget this is actually a link so we have to actually make link this up with this um, particular sections here the contact and the rest so to make this a link we would need to surround this with the a tag sorry i'm going to surround it with the a tag and we are just going to put the href blank using the um the hash button the hash icon sorry hash text okay so i'm just going to use the um, vs code to duplicate it to duplicate in vs code just simply hold shift alt and down and it's going to duplicate i'm going to duplicate this three times and i'm going to just change the content from how it works so about and contacts let's just change this contact us and about us 
that I'm going to put the four cores. And yes, so at the meantime, let's refresh this. We can see our website is looking quite horrible, but with CSS, it brings out the beauty in it. So, how do we actually style it? So, I'm going to go to my style.css. I've already linked it over here before now. I'm going to head over to my style.css. Now, the first thing you always want to do whenever you start um, styling your web page is because of the fact that um, they are always margins if you check on your inspect let's open our chrome dev tools and inspect this element so um, this element is just used to hover around to see your margins and padding by default your body tag has some margin around so we're going to need to remove that and from other tags that don't require those margin at first we are going to remove all that so that will be the first thing i always do i always call it a reset we are going to reset this and we are going to use the star whenever you see anybody make use of star in css it means all so it's referring to all the whole tags and all the whole styling what should they have so the first thing i'm going to say is going to say margin zero padding zero and i'm going to say box sizing border box this will help us avoid a lot of problems that will make our content overflow to the right we are going to talk more on it later so i've saved my css right now and when we refresh it if you notice there was a space by this left hand side the first time we ran this code um at, at first but i'm going to refresh it now and you see our content goes to the end so this allows our um, content to really really be spaced out so i'm going to just go back to the um cs the html i'm going to give our um div a class of header so to be able to get make use of it, I'm going to say dot header. I'm going to say um, width 100%. That's to take full the full width. So the header is going to take the full width of the entire page. Now I want to set a background color. I'm going to use this color picker tool I have here. So it actually gives me this color right here. So I'm just going to come here and background color paste the color over here. So once we save it and come here and refresh, we can see we have our website up, but it's still looking very, very scattered. Now, next thing I want to do is to actually set a color. Now, I'm going to set a color directly on the header. What happens here is that because of the fact that by default, all your HTML elements inherit colors from whatever is in the body or a tag above them, you could simply specify a color on the header tag and each item inside or each element that can make use of the color white maybe like a text will actually inherit this white color from it so i'm going to refresh this and as you can see our icon and our diamond laundry actually got that color from it from that so the next thing i want to do is to make use of flexbox Flexbox makes it easier to manage the grading of our, of our applications or our web application because before the invention of Flexbox or before Flexbox started being a thing, I knew I always had serious issues whenever it comes to making my nav because I had to align everything and make sure everything is at the center. As you can see, these guys are just straight at the same center and it's, it's working that very fine. So Flexbox makes work easier for us in that um, situation. So I'm going to come here to activate Flexbox. We're just going to come to the header and say display flex. So once I do this, Flexbox and I refresh, Flexbox automatically does this stuff for me. But ah, that's not the end. We would need to do something else. We would need to first um, make use of this. We're going to say align items center. And then we're going to justify content let's say space between space between just uh, make sure that our content are uh, i'll refresh this now is purely spaced um, between but it seems there's a little problem okay i see i made a mistake here so this um div is not meant to be called the header what happened is that we're supposed to have a general div that holds everything in so that was a mistake on my part so i'm just going to take all these guys and move them into a general container 
and it's that container that will house everything that has to do with the header so i'm going to set it a class of i'm going to set it a class and i'm going to set it to header so as you can see we have the header and this is a separate div and this is another element here so once we do this i think it should fix our work okay fine you can see everything is now inside but this is not all so the next thing we want to do we want to actually make sure our code has um spacings inside um to be able to do that we we'll simply have to say we we'll simply have to say um the padding sorry let me space this out so, so say padding i'm going to call it 20 px 20 pixels another width I'm going to refresh it as you can see the, the it's a bit thick so another thing i'm going to do is also change this guy from here and i will put it directly after the diamond laundry so let's see what happens now and great they are actually on the same line now which makes it very very good and any font size styling we style on diamond laundry will also affect the icon itself so now let's work on this list here though we are not done with this other aspect we'll get back to it let's work on the list so i'm going to come to my css and say inside the header check the list um and be on another list as you can see we have all these bullet points and this and the color is, is so ugly we are going to change it right now so i'm going to come down here i'm going to say dot header and i'm going to say ul that's the unordered list. I'm going to tell the unordered list list style. I'm going to set it to none. List style simply means um, that this icon you could change the style to maybe Roman numerals or whatever you want, but I don't want any style in there, so I'm just going to set it to none. And once we refresh, you can see our um, bullet points actually disappear next thing i'm going to do is to set the display to flex we're also going to be using flexbox inside here i like flexbox flexbox is very very nice you could also go ahead to learn it or i might drop a tutorial on flexbox tell me down below in the comment section if you actually want a tutorial on flexbox and if you haven't done it please like this video and subscribe if you're enjoying what you're learning so far and try to also code along so that you could get um, the most value as possible so now that we've done the flexbox you can see everything aligned why does it actually align like this flexbox has a property which is called flex direction and it could be set to row column or column reverse and row reverse likewise so let's see what happens when we set the flex direction to column as i've done in line 21 over here so i'm going to refresh this page as you can see it switches back to the um, vertical alignment and once we set flex direction to row we come back here and refresh it goes back to the horizontal direction by default whenever you set an element to display flex it automatically takes this flex direction rule so we're not going to be writing it down here because it's just going to be redundant and it's not going to have any if it's not going to change much because it's already doing that behind the scenes so um yeah so we are actually good with that now we're going to go next to the um the you the list items themselves we're going to say dot header ul li that's for each one in the for each element that has the class header you should check the ul and actually style just the list elements inside so the first thing i want to do is to um give each a margin um left and right of 10 px so i'm going to say zero i'm going to say 10 px and once we go there and we refresh you can see we actually get a space around here and you might be like wow this isn't supposed to work it's supposed to only take um two um four values or just one value well your, your css uh, with things such as margin and padding actually take two values and whenever you have two values the first value represents the top and bottom and the second value represents the left and right so what i'm simply saying here is that there should be no margin top and there should be no margin bottom but the margin left and right should be 10 px that's why you actually see it spaced out but when i let's let's also change the color of this to white 
I change the color of the text to white. So I'm going to say color. I'm going to say white. And I save it. Once I come here and I refresh, the color isn't appearing. What is happening? We could fix that because um, the main reason that happens is because of this A tag here. As you can see, it's by default, it comes with um, what we call um, the decoration line decoration what it has a particular property i can't really remember it at the moment so we we'll need to actually style the a tag directly so i'm going to say dot header and i'm just going to say a now what header a does is that every anchor tag in the header is going to be affected but if i want to be more direct i could say in in all the um header tag in each um list uh, another list will have another another um, the list item which then has the a or the anchor tag to see then we are going to see um, text decoration and we're going to say none now what that text decoration does is that it actually gives it the underline and those color of the thing so we've removed that underline we don't need the underline um, kind of those um, things that underline our text Next thing we are going to set the color of the text to white. So once I refresh this, as you can see, our text is actually looking very brilliant. Now I I, I do not like the I do not like the font size, the font color, um, font style of this. Or in CSS we call it font family. I'm talking in Microsoft terms. So I'm going to set I'm going to set the font size of each property right now. I'm going to set the font size on the all CSS. That means each every tag should have the specific font size. And I'm going to call this Sego UI. Many of you, some of you should know this. And I'm going to say if Sego UI isn't available, load sans serif. So what happens is that it the browser checks for Sego UI. If it doesn't have the Sego UI, it loads sans serif. So we could work with this too for now. Let me quickly make sure I seal this off with my semicolon. Then once we refresh our page, I just press the control. Ah, okay. So I don't really know if this has applied. Let's 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 style our text more. So I'm going to make it look bolder with the font weight. I'm going to set the font weight to semi bold, which is also known as 600. And I'm going to increase the font size to about let's say 16 pixels. Let's see if that's going to be okay. Oh, as you can see, that's actually looking very good now. Um, we would need to do more styling right there. So once we go back to our code. Okay, so let's just see whether we could increase this to 18 pixels. And we'll save it right now. So when we save it and we refresh, good, our text is looking way more legible right now and we could purely read it by just um, looking at the code over there. So for now, we don't really have much change again. Once we hover around our text, we can see everything works very fine. I would really want our text to have more spacing because if you look at look in this one, one, the spacing was quite nice. And we notice that here has less space than here, which isn't that nice. So we will need to add space to the left. And what handles that space by the left? We are going to use the mark, the padding left and right. But we are going to use a shorthand for it this time. Remember when I mentioned this, that when you specify two values, the first value means the top and bottom, and the next one has the left and right. So I'm going to go to the header again. And I'm going to say... The padding should not just be 20 px all round, but rather it should have um, another decimal of 60 px left and right, a padding of 60 px. So we're going to refresh it right now. As you can see, all our content is moving closer. I could decide to increase this further and change it to 100 px, and it brings it even closer. So that's actually how we are going to work with the header for now. Um, what really makes our header aligned is because of this property here, align item center, 
it brings our it brings our nav and the main text here to be centered so i think we are majorly done with the with this for now so there is another problem the sego ui isn't loading right i just giving us pure um sound serif i think so let's let's check that out and see why it's not because font size here is a bit different from this guy here let's check this so actually it is loading times new roman so let's see how we can fix this oh now i know what the problem is i actually specified font size which was wrong completely wrong the right property is the font family property so once i come here and refresh yeah this looks better so let's head over to our hero section where we get this get your laundry and dry cleaning done within 24 hours and this image over here and let's see how that would work so first thing we want to do is that we want to create another div here i'm going to quickly make a comment that says um hero section now in the hero section i'm going to have a div and inside this div we are going to just separate this because this is going to be a different div they get the text here and then the image is going to be different so let's do that right now i'm going to say um for the hero section i'm just going to call it the class of hero then we are going to have our first text over here it's going to be inside one div and then we are going to have um a class of hero description as a text and it's going to have a h1 that says according to this it's going to say get your dry cleaning and laundry done within 24 hours we copy it and we paste it over here then we also have another um, one down here that says just smile and relax we we'll do the dirty work so we'll just put it in a p tag since it's just quite small put it in a p tag and just say just smile and we'll do the dirty work and we do that right away now for the next one this actually looks like this looks like a button but unfortunately this isn't a button it's linking us somewhere so we are going to actually make use of a link but we're going to style it in a way that it looks like a button so check out for that i'm going to use our a tag i'm going to specify the href as not going anywhere i'm going to, I'm going to say start here so the next thing we have to do is to actually tell our to tell our browser that um, we want this image here so i'm going to put the image and for the image i'm going to specify where the image so i'm just going to say dot forward slash that means in the current directory check for under files and look for man in hero png so if i should save this right now and check it in my browser over here we see yes our text is coming up our image is well prepared so our content would need some spacing and we need to get this specific spacing you can see it starts from this left and ends somewhere here for us to actually do that we have to create something like a container to actually house our properties inside so i'm going to create a container class right now it's going to be a div I'm going to name it a class of container and I'm going to wrap everything about the um, hero section inside the container so that container is going to what be what to give us the spaces around here so once we refresh we see nothing really changes so first of all um, another thing we want to do is to add this padding on top that gives us this particular space and that's nice so I'm going to come here and I'm going to say dot hero. Then we're going to say padding. I'm just going to put the padding top for here and I'm going to say that EPX. Then we want this nice color over here. So I'm going to, just going to pick my color tool here. For those asking what kind of color tool is that that is able to pick a color from a web page. It's called Colorzilla. So you want to check it out if you are interested in it and you could get it on the Chrome extension store. So I'm going to say background color and I'm going to set it to that color. 
so we've saved it that's nice so once we refresh it we can see oh the color is there but our content is still a bit not arranged calm down we are going to get to that level so if you remember i mentioned we are going to use that container to get this particular spacing yeah let's do that right now so if you can remember we wrapped all our items in a container now i'm going to come to my style.css and i'm going to give a container class take note we're going to make use of this container later on in future so i'm going to be coding it so that it's going to be made, made itself in the future so i'm going to now give it a width of 85 percent so that means it doesn't take up the full screen but it takes up just about half so once i set to 85 percent nothing happens now what really we are meant to do is to actually allow this guy to allow this guy to um move to this left and this one to this right and then we are going to um see what will happen for that to work i'm just going to say another thing down here on top of this i'm going to say dot hero and i'm going to say dot container why i'm doing this is because i said earlier we want to make use of this container in multiple places so i'm just going to put this to only work on the container in the hero section i'm going to cut this styling up here and take it to the top i always call this a utility styling because something you would need to use severally so for this i'm going to say display flex so if you remember i told you flex moves our property sideways but nothing happens why because we've not refreshed it so once we refresh you can see this is actually um, moved sideways but our content is still not centered how can we do that now what happens here is this i'm going to explain to the inspect tool once i click on this button and i hover around here as you can see um let me come over here you can see this is the container by the way this grayish thing by the left over here is what shows us the margin so as you can see it's just showing us that our container is aligned to the left and there's a margin by the right well we can fix that with this simple thing i'm going to come to this place and i'm going to go back to the container and i'm going to say margin zero and auto now what happens is that this auto tries to find the remaining spaces and it tries to fill it up thereby giving it a margin left and a margin right so that our content will be at the center and take note we said zero at first because we don't want any margin at the top or bottom but we just want the margin at the left and right to be auto so once we save it this is another way of centering your element so once we save it and we refresh which you can see when i hover around this we see that the margin is not just by the right but also by the left and it's centering our content in the middle so that's fine so uh, we are going to make use of this like this in future again so for here after we say the display flex um i don't want our content to just be up here so there's a property to bring make our content our content horizontally aligned and that's called um align items and i'm going to say center so i will save this so our content is aligned in center and going to refresh this right now as you can see it's no longer at the top but it has come to the middle of the page right here so yeah that one goes well for us so what are we going to do next we are going to just style this um, pages like you see here get your dry cleaning services done within 24 hours and this and this. so you can see for this just smile and relax they are both um, statements there but we're going to get to that let's focus on styling this get your laundry and dry cleaning done within hours so let's look at our html to see how we style that so as you can see this is inside a container or is inside a div called hero description and then we have the h1 p tag and the a tag so <coughs> i'm going to say dot hero i think description h1 i'm going to say color should be equal to this color that we use in the header so once i come here as you can see this is you might not observe it but this is actually pitch black but once i refresh it, the color actually changes to something more appealing so i don't just want the color to be there i also want the color to also be in all the tags inside the hero description and the way we what this seems um element simply means is that 
all all the tags inside the hero description um, elements or the class hero description any tag that is a child of it should contain the color of zero um, of this color I don't really know the name it's it's kind of blackish blue I don't know what you guys call it blackish blue whatever whatever so that's it but as you can see this content is quite packed like it's it's joined together but this one here is just paced out and this guy here is kind of joined together so how do we actually fix this well if you remember we had a container around this and that container looks is actually very big at the moment so we need to reduce that container to get what we want so i'm just going to come to this and the container is the hero description not the main container take note this main container holds both the image and the hero description but hero con the description contains the text only so i'm just going to come here up here i say dot hero description i'm going to say width of something like 40 percent so once we refresh this oh you can see right now this actually came to the middle but our image also moved at the same time how do we fix this flexbox has a property called justify content space evenly which makes sure that our content is spaced evenly among each other that means the spacing by the left and the right and everything and i feel that will be able to fix this so i'm going to come here and if you remember the place that we described that flex was this hero container then i'm going to say justify content space evenly once i save it and we refresh as you can see our text comes to the middle so this is actually very nice so the next thing we want to do now is to increase the font size of this text over here and to fix this one and this particular button that's here so to actually do that we will we'll be using for the h1 we're going to be using a font size of i think let me check it's 38 pixels compared to the former one so we're going to be saying um dot hero description h1 i'm going to say the same font size 38 pixels i save that and i refresh as you can see it's looking clean just like the other one then we need to work on this as you can see here this is actually bold which is something we have to enable in our html so i'm going to come here and and just smile and relax we are going to put the b tag or what's the other tag or the strong tag both works strong tag is html5 specific but the b tag also works but sometimes you might just want to use the strong tag and then we come here and see another b tag and close it okay so once we come back to this and we refresh as you can see the just smile and relax is really working so we we'll need to just adjust the font size of this and i'm going to come to this uh, my css i'm going to say dot hero description p tag we are going to say font size you can say 18 pixels so once i refresh it, refresh it it seems bigger but actually our text looks too close to each other so what happens is that i'm just going to put a margin top and bottom on this just smile and react and do that to work so here we're going to just say margin then we just need for a top and bottom so we we'll say 50 px and zero we don't need for the left and right if we just say 50 px it will apply both to the top left right bottom and all that but that's not what we want we just want the um, top and bottom to have we don't want the left and right to have any margin so we'll leave that like that so as you can see it's now spaced out so i think that's all for the text now the next thing to do is the start here if you remember from our html tag this was an anchor tag now let's try to style it so we're going to say dot hero description and see the a tag first of all i'm going to write the text decoration none 
so as to remove this underline for you to remove this underline you have to use that text decoration now so i'm going to save it and let's quickly check it i'm going to refresh with the control r as you can see it has been removed so what do we do next now the next thing we have to do is to set a background color of this specific color i think vs code must have saved it for me so i'm going to say background color this color i'm going to set a color that's the inner color to be white the color of the text and the background color should be this so we're going to refresh it and it looks so small we can fix that by doing a padding so i'm just going to say padding 10 px and 20 px so it padding left and right is going to be padding top and bottom is going to be 10 and the padding left and right is going to be 20 so once we refresh we can see it's actually very it works very fine here but the spacing isn't still there well this happens because by default html doesn't observe the height and width for what we call inline elements if you don't know what inline elements is you might want to just pause the video and research and come back to understand how they work but to fix that particular bug we are just going to come here and say display and no i'm not saying flex now i'm going to say inline block so once i save that it's going to begin to respect that margin we actually put in this side the other time so yes it has respected it now then i'm going to put the border radius because here is a bit curved at the edges so i'm going to put a border radius border radius of 3px i'm going to save it and also refresh it it looks clean so let's compare what we have now we can see get your dry cleaning laundry within 24 hours and this other two so we are uh, Get the laundry and dry cleaning. We are close. We are not exactly all completed, but we are close to it. Not pixel perfect, but close. So this is the one we are working on. So now let's go to the next section, the how it works section. So as you can see, it's it's nothing so somehow, but we're going to actually do it. So I'm going to create a div down here. I'm going to say div. Yeah, we're going to put a class that says how it works. How it works, sorry. And for this, we are just going to put mainly, we are just going to come here and say dot how it works. But we are not really concerned about the how it works per se, but we are concerned about this white guy here. Now, I'm going to just going to write some code and you're going to see how that actually works in a short period of time. So, like we made this of the container before, we are going to say um, div, sorry, not dir, div, I'm going to put a class of container. Then I'm going to say, um, maybe put a H1 and see how it works. Then I'm going to have a P tag that says, um, this is our process for customers. So once I save it and come here, go to our main building, and you can see it just says how it works. This is our process for beginners or for customers, sorry. So now let's style this how it works we're going to set the background color to the normal color that we used before sorry not the normal color this blue color this blue over here so we're going to pick this out and we're going to use this blue vs code actually gives me intelligence to check out my previous colors to know which one i'm going to use so once we refresh this as you can see the how it works section is almost complete <laughs> just kidding uh let's work on that so what we actually want to have this white this white content in here is going to be the container now if i remember i told you we are going to making use of it severally so this is another situation where we are going to be making use of it <clears throat> so i'm going to say that how it works and i'm going to say that container so i'm going to now do um 
the background color because we don't want it to be the normal color we're going to set the background color to hashtag fff this is also another um representing a representation of white this is called hex color codes for those who don't know so i'm going to refresh this and it's still looking so scrawny for now we are going to change that so for the container of the how it works we are just going to set a padding top and bottom for this we say padding top should be um let's say 50 px and then padding bottom should also be 15 px but there should be no left and right in this situation please get familiar with using shorthand with um css because it's going to save you more of your time so instead of writing padding top 50 px padding bottom 50 um 50 px i can just specify it using shorthand so i refresh it and yeah we are getting close we are getting close um so another thing we're going to do is that we're going to set a padding bottom i'm going to set a padding button directly for this and i'm going to call it maybe about 50 px so once we refresh we can see oh yes we are getting close to our success over here so the next thing we're going to do is to just center the how it works text and this is our process for customers so i'm going to just say on the how it works sorry the container because if you remember i mentioned something about it's always um text always inheriting properties from above elements that are the appearance so i'm going to say every text that is inside the container of how it works should have a text align of center but once i save it and do it you can see all of them now has how it works so um let's check then in the how it works section you can see they have we have three cards here one with get a price book a pickup breathe and relax now let's see how can we make this card first of all i observe one thing we have some spacing over here we have some spacing over here so what we simply do is to just um say for our container we're just going to put the little spacing by the left and right so let's say 20 px we're just going to be spacing for the left and right rather than it just being empty but for our own now there's nothing much yet so that you actually notice that there was a change in the space so let's compare and see some other things so if you see in the how it works it's actually curved so we'll add that curve there we're going to say um to get the curve we just simply say border radius and we're going to say um something like 15 pixels and save it so once we get back and refresh sorry fresh okay so you can see we have our curved edges around here we might also want to add some other things later on but let's get to the main side for this so let's see how we could make this card so pardon me as i do the html right now we are going to say inside this we're going to have a div and the div is going to have a class of row then inside the div we're going to have a class with the this thing card and for the card we are going to for every item inside we are going to have something like an icon then we're going to have a h1 that's a, a large text like like this one here okay we could actually even copy this over here get a price and then we paste it over here and then we're going to have a p tag that contains a little description about what that is so we're going to copy it here uh we're going to save it over here so i just something to format my tool so this is actually how our card is going to look what we we are going to sorry about this i clicked on that this is my mistake we need to multiply this our card three times we will do that by coming here to duplicate in vs code you are going to hold the shift alt and down i'm going to duplicate your code i duplicated mine twice so once i save it and come back here and refresh we have this this isn't looking pretty at all but we are going to now style it using what we know which is flexbox 
so if you remember i set a class named Ro. some of you might be saying is this not bootstrap well this isn't bootstrap but i'm kind of picking some inspiration from bootstrap and their naming conventions to be able to um, know how to write proper css for my own so in the dot row because we might make it make use of it elsewhere in future i'm going to just simply set the display to flex and line items which is going to set the items aligned vertically and then the justify contents I'm going to say space between sorry space evenly so each of them get their spaces so i'm going to refresh right now as you can see all our content is now horizontal vertically if you remember i mentioned um, that each content sorry that the flex box has um, a property called flex direction which um, moves our content horizontally because it's by default it is set to row so it moves it horizontally so now let's style our card if you can see over here we had our card having um, a blue the same blue color from the top here is that blue to be sincere i don't know why that is blue again okay so let's let's work on the card and i will say dot card since it's a class now i'm going to say dot card should have a background color and css game say, say sorry not css the visual studio code gave me the color i will need so let's save it and once we go back to our html and refresh we can see yes we're having a the color then if you could remember one thing i told you about how text inherits their colors from their parents so card is actually a div that houses a lot of text and we need to change all the whole colors for the text so instead of going each into each of them and saying i um card i white color white card h1 color white and this which could be a long process you can just simplify it by simply coming here and saying color is equal to white and as you can see we have the white colors now our content is looking so 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 scrawny compared to the main one we will need to add some margins some spacings as you can see here there are spacings here and there are also spacings from top to bottom so we are going to add those spaces that are the top and bottom um for us to add those spaces we are going to need to add padding to our text So to add those padding, we're going to just say the top and bottom should be 40 px and the left and right should be 20 px. So I'm going to come back to my listing and say padding 40 px 20 px. We are going to save and once we come back and refresh, we see wow this actually looks better. Yes, it looks better now, but there are no spaces in there. So how do we fix this? We can fix this by simply setting our own space on the distance by giving it them a margin um, left and right as something about 20 pixels and we save it. So once we come here and refresh, as you can see, each element is having their own space right now. So you can also see they have rounded corners around here and this text is looking quite big, which we haven't fixed yet. So we're going to just come here and set the box, box, sorry, border radius 10 pixels, border radius 10 pixels, and save it. So we're going to come here and you can see the border radius has applied. But this is our process for customers and our distance. They don't have, they are too close to each other, which we are going to remove. So for the row, I'm going to just come here and say margin, let's set like 20 pixels, zero. So it has margin top and bottom. So I refresh it and as you can see, our item has moved a bit downward. We could also increase this to something like 30. Good, so it moves down further. So let's now increase the font size of this um, icon over here. So I'm just going to specify the name of the um, tag used to bring in the icon, which is I tag. So I'm going to say card and the i tag inside. So I'm going to say dot card i. I'm going to say font size. I'm going to say 45 pixels. So once I refresh this, as you can see, we have very very big text. 
telling us the font size that we are using in this application um, there are still some little things left we need to give some spacing between each element now I'm going to write a very very custom thing I learned from another um, CSS design. so I'm going to say each item inside each element inside the card item um, the card class should have a margin top and bottom of five pixels left and right of zero so let's see how that works as you can see margin every item inside margin should have um, inside card should have a margin of five pixels top and bottom so we refresh this and as you can see it actually looks quite good now so we can see from here we've been able to build the navbar the hero section and the how it works section so this is going to be the part one of the video in the next section we are going to be completing the other one or oh, we've actually forgotten one more thing but get a price estimate so let's quickly work that out now so i'm just going to come here after the row because the row moves everything to the left so we don't want it to be inside i'm sorry aligns everything horizontally so we don't want it to be inside we want to be after it and then i'm going to now say the a tag i'm going to put the hash sign i'm going to say give a price estimate so i'm going to save it and inside here i'm going to say the how it works but how it works i'm going to say a so first thing we want to do let's first see how it's appearing over at our end we'll refresh it as you can see it comes with the um normal a tag um what's it called the normal a tag um styling so we're going to remove that now we're going to say list sorry not list text the correction and set it to none to remove the underline so to they remove this underline this thing here we're going to remove it just now then we are going to say um color white that's to have the white text and we're going to say background color let's say it should have this text well if you remember i mentioned that this when we save it and check it you now it looks quite good we could also add padding um we could say 10 px 20 px and save it here we'll refresh and it gives us something very very good one more thing that will make it even better is the border radius I'm going to just give it three pixels so it will be quite small so as you can see we've gotten a good we've gotten a good um a good hard work section so you could quickly copy out this code you could go back rewind and see we've written about 110 lines of css that's that's not much that's not much so just want to take your time understand what they do you could go back through it and see it this is going to be the part one of this section um the part two is going to cover how to make this particular section and make this four grid um layout as a book it called grid relaxed and all this then we're also going to learn how to style this form like this and the footer so that will be all for this video see you guys in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe guys it means a lot to me